Well, greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well today. Today is Saturday. You know what that means. Saturday Nightmares live from New York with me. I hope to see you all there at 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Let me tell you something. I really, really need this live stream because it's been a long, long week. Anyway... Today's upload is absolutely just terrifying and mind-blowing. Before we get into it, a couple links. As you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, channel membership are in the description below. The merch is displayed directly under the video. Also, 20 bucks is 20 bucks. Tank tops, hoodies t-shirts men and women and sticker or magnet excuse me is out and in the store but check it out dogman frightening encounters volume one through three the audiobook versions they were written and researched by tom lyons narrated and produced by me jeff nadolny those audiobooks are available on audible amazon and itunes links to which are also in the description as well and finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support this channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It does not cost you a cent to click that like button. It takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon. And folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all these things, they really do help the channel to continue to grow and go. And yes, folks, they definitely do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump into today's upload, shall we? All right, guys, so today's upload is actually very terrifying. Um, shared to me by a park ranger or former retired park ranger out of Michigan, his uh, national forest where he was stationed out of was the Huron National Forest. He worked from 1989 to 2011 as a forest ranger um he had seen quite a bit of very interesting things during his 22 years of being a park ranger <clears throat> um during that time he had first heard of dog man back in the early 90s um, when Michigan started to approach this wolf management, um, program and they had actually, a few park rangers were talking about, you know, wolves getting bigger. Are these wolves getting bigger, you know, as they, as they come down, um, from, Isle Royal down into, you know, the other federal parks of Michigan. And a few of the guys were like, no, 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 that don't get close to those. Um, if by chance you do see one of them, uh, stay in your vehicle. If there's any people around, get them out of that area. Uh, chances are they are a dog man. <clears throat> And that was the term that was used um, in the early 90s by these park rangers in Michigan. Now, <clears throat> during this wolf management thing, um, they were trying to reintroduce wolves into these parks. Um, deer populations were exploding. And then the management program kind of stopped for about 15 years and then picked back up in 2005. Now, the reason why is because they started to notice a decline in whitetail and other um, herbivore animals. Also, 
they started to notice a decline in coyote. Um, and they'd find a couple of dead bear periodically. Now, that brings us to what Gus wanted to share with us. Um, that is not his real name. So the year was 2003 and Gus had been on duty for about a couple of hours before they had received a radio call um, stating that a bear had just attacked a woman in the region of Emily Lake. Now, they were up north of this area and they had to come down um, a Sable Valley River Road, which then connects to Curtisville Road, which is the same road, essentially. Um, that brings you straight through the Huron National Forest and brings you to Emily Lake. Now, as they are driving, it's about a 20 minute drive from where they were to get to this small, very isolated lake. Um, <clears throat> they had been getting um, bits and pieces of information. Apparently, uh, the woman had been attacked. Two of her family members took off to go to try and find park rangers. They found um, an old, old I say old payphone, which, you know, I mean, virtually uh, non-existent nowadays. But they found a payphone. Obviously, cell phones were not um, as big as they are. <clears throat> now in 2003 uh, and some two or three family members had stayed behind uh, trying to what they thought was trying to save this woman's life control the bleeding and you know just kind of keep the bear away from her apparently the bear was still on scene so Gus and one of his fellow rangers are traveling down. They're getting bits and pieces <clears throat> over the radio stating that, you know, these people were camping in the area. They had gone to this little lake to go swimming. And all of a sudden, um, this bear came out of the woods very quickly and started mauling this woman. Um, particularly the woman, no one else. Now, as they are coming into the area, um, they're kind of planning, hey, you know, what, what should we do? We, we've seen, you know, we've had our run-ins with bear, but an attack, you know, that's something seldom that hap doesn't happen in the, uh, Huron Manistee National Park. Um, what the hell, you know? They both have their shotguns in this vehicle, 870s, and they both have um, 45s. Now, they get into this little road that meanders into the woods, <clears throat> and it brings you right to this very, very small lake, uh, Emily Lake. And <clears throat> as they get to the road and they're going up the road, um, they see two people running down the road towards their truck, uh, screaming. They're bloody, um, blood soaked clothes. And they, you know, Gus and his partner are like, you know, are these the, one was a woman, one was a man. Um, is that the woman that, that had been attacked? And they stop, you know, jump out. 
Are you okay? Yada, yada. Yes, we're fine. Um, our friend is by the lake. Um, we can't keep this thing away from our friend. It keeps biting and mauling her. She, we believe she is dead right now. Um, one of the park rangers, uh, Gus, not, not Gus, but the partner, you know, says, you know, get in the truck, stay in the truck. Um, how big is the bear? They're trying to get kind of like, um, an approximation of how, how large this bear is. That's when the man says, where did you get bear? Have you ever seen American werewolf in London? That's what's attacking our friend. Now, Gus and his partner look at each other like, okay, we've heard of these things. We've never seen them. Um, what's the protocol? That's immediately what Gus had been thinking. And he knew his uh, friend and fellow park ranger was thinking the same exact thing. Like, what's the protocol? What are we going to do to, you know, do we dispatch it? Do we, you know, try and get this woman, uh, her body away? What? So... They park a little ways up from where they had picked these two people. And they said, you know, stay right here. Stay in the truck. They have a portable radio. There's a radio in the truck. Um, but they didn't want to kind of alert or make matters worse in discussing anything with... Uh, their superiors in front of these two civilians. They turned the radio off in their truck and they are talking to their immediate supervisor um, and pretty much repeat what the man said. You know, uh, American werewolf in London was the exact term he used. Um, was, do you believe, you know, that this is one of these creatures these dog men that we hear about during the, the, uh, wolf management days. Um, what do you think? Is there a protocol? What do we do? Cause she's not with us. We're out of our vehicle. Now we need to proceed up to where her body is. They believe she's dead. Um, as they're talking to their direct supervisor, a car pulls up behind them and kind of proceeds to go around the truck. Uh, Gus stops the vehicle. They stop and it's the other two people that had made the phone call from um, a gas station payphone. And uh, he says, you know, park behind our truck, stay here. We're going to have your friends sit in the vehicle with you guys. Um, but whatever you do, stay here. Uh, there's certain procedure that we have to follow. Um, we will retrieve your friend. At that point, they are not really going off what, what these people are saying. Like, um, that she... You know, there's still a little chance that she may be alive. So they're, they're talking to these people like their friend is still alive. And the one that was driving the car up said, she's dead. That thing killed our friend. We, you know, she was dead probably, be, you know, the first few minutes of the mauling. Um, we just, you know, we didn't know what to do. We didn't want to get it arrested for, you know, people thinking that we did this or what. Um, 
our friends stayed back because they wanted to make sure that, you know, if she was alive, they could at least save her if they could get this thing away from her. Now, he said, all right, stay parked. Meanwhile, his partner is now getting the details of the the procedures. So procedure-wise was approach the area, survey the area. If the animal or dog man creature is still in the area, do not fire upon it unless it starts to approach you or you feel your life is endangered. Um, don't try and get the body if she's still alive. Um, try, you know, don't walk up and try and shoot this animal or, you know, just don't put yourselves in harm's way. Um, if it's running away, but if it's on top of the, if the, the person, try and scare it, but do not shoot this thing. Pretty much don't approach it, which was not, was not going good with Gus in his, in his mind. Cause he's like, if this woman is still alive and this thing's attacking her, we should be able to shoot this thing. What are you talking about? policy procedure what what are you talking about well there's people that we need to call that can maintain this situation just keep the people that are in the vehicle there and kind of don't let anyone else go up that road quickly check and see what the situation is up north by by emily lake okay so as they start to walk up a ways they can hear something in the woods um kind of on both sides of them but they're like wait a second there's something on both sides of us here these people just said there was only one as they're walking a little ways in they realize okay that's not what we think it is, it's just, you know, maybe our imagination playing tricks on us, our fear, our adrenaline, and they start to walk up to the, where the area is. They see the body. Um, there's not really a shore, but there kind of is. It's, it's not like a, it's a, it's a swimming hole, but it's not a beach. Um, they see the body, but they don't see the creature. And they're like, all right, we're good. We're good. We can get this, this woman out of here. We can see if she's still alive. So they're get probably 20 feet from the body and they're scanning the area all around them. And they hear the horn go off in the car. And they turn and look. And in the distance, they can see their truck. And they can see the car. And they can see this large quadruped walking towards the car. It had just kind of come up to their truck and is now walking to the car. <clears throat> they both immediately, both rangers are like, holy shit, that thing is huge. And it's, you know, its head easily came up to mid window of the truck. Um, just a, a monstrous chest high for a male adult, for an average size male adult, 5'10", 5 5'11". 5 and, uh, Okay, you check her. I'm going to watch what's going on. Um, I'm sure these people are not going to get out of their car. So, they check the woman. The woman is dead. She's dead. 
um, it looked like she had been mauled for hours. There was chunks. Um, she had been partially consumed. Now, at this point, their truck is down this roadway, but the creature is down the roadway, and now the people that are that they have to kind of protect is down there. Um, partner gets on the radio. Woman is dead, but we have a situation now because as we were checking up on the women or the woman, um, the people are in the car behind our truck, but somewhere between us walking up and us now turning around, that creature got behind us is not paying us any attention. So do not fire upon it. There are people coming that will be able to handle this situation. It is what their job is. You know, that is their job. What you will do is you will listen to these people. Um, we're sending two more rangers out to assist in keeping that road closed and keeping the people in the car safe, but keeping them in their car and not leaving. Um, that's fine and dandy, but how long is that going to take? Because we are now open. We are just in the middle of this trail that turns into a road. That's not really, a, it's not a, it's, not a macadam road. It's a dirt road. Not a fire road, but it's a dirt road. Um, now it's not. But we're in the open. If we get to our truck, it'll be a an amazing feat. But how we, we are supposed to wait? How long? So they are essentially pinned down. Um, there's about 150 feet between them and their truck is in the middle. These people are in the middle. The dog man is now at where the car is. All right. If we don't shoot this thing, what should we do? They start walking toward the truck and the car and the creature. They both make an agreement. If this thing comes at us, we have no other choice but to shoot it. We already know that it's dangerous. It just partially consumed this woman in less than an hour. Um, not that she was almost all gone, but she was, you know, chunks taken out of her stomach area, her soft tissue, her legs. Um, Gus does probably the dumbest thing I he has ever done. Did the dumbest thing I ever have done is I took my pistol off of my hip and I shot two rounds in the air. Angled away from Where if, you know, by chance it, it was to hit something, it wouldn't hit the creature or a civilian. Immediately, the second the rounds are fired and there is noise from that firearm, that dog man turns around and as it turns, it starts walking back towards them. Now they are prime target. It gets just past the truck and stands up. And what Gus said, he, he said this thing was enormous. Just even from back there, you know how you see something in the distance and it's small? Well, that's not how it was when we saw this thing. It was the size of a large man 
in the distance. So I'd hate to see how big it is. We need to do something now. His partner's like, what the hell did you shoot? You know, they're now bickering, but they're watching this thing. They both have their um, 870 Remingtons, double out buck, and they're both now kind of locked and loaded on this thing as it's approaching them bipedally. They both agree. If we have to, we will put it down. Do you think these do you think these bullets are going to put this thing down though? That's the question. That's the question that you know stayed with Gus and his partner for 30 seconds to a minute as they are now getting closer to each other. The men have stopped walking, but this thing's walking towards them. Um, each step is three times what a man would take. As they're preparing to fire, um, of course, in both park rangers, Minds are, are the people in the car going to be in our line of, our line of fire? You know, are we putting these people in jeopardy by shooting at this thing? <clears throat> they pretty much decide that, no, we're not, but let's be extra careful and kind of spread out on this road. So you get on one side, I get on the other, and we're kind of aiming at an angle at this thing. Um, instead of straight on where possibly uh, a shot could be taken and hit the, hit the vehicle with the civilians in it. They're preparing to fire <clears throat> and they can hear an engine. Um, Gus is thinking, did these these kids, you know, they they weren't much younger than Gus and his partner, but they were kids still, mid twenties. Um, did they start their car, and are they backing out? What they see next is another Ranger vehicle pull up behind the the car, and. Two other park rangers jump out. Um, they can see one is on a handheld. And both have their shotguns at the ready as well. Um, the dog man is now in between these four park rangers. But instinctually both all four guys know that you know this thing has put us in quite the pickle because if by chance <clears throat> shots have to be fired all four of us are kind of in in danger of being shot by accident um what do we do no sooner does he think, you know, what do we do? But this dog man turns back around and looks at the car. And now the two other park rangers that had just pulled in. And it kind of drops to all fours. And just stops. Dead stop. It stands up again, split second, drops to all fours, stands up again, and starts hauling ass at the two park rangers that just pulled in. The two park rangers that had just pulled in start shooting. And they can hear these rounds connecting. 
Um, as they're shooting, Gus and his partner start running down the trail on the side of the, the trail road, um, not directly in the line of sight through the line of fire, but they're running and it stands up and kind of starts to make a run at the Rangers again. That's when Gus's partner stops. He's still jogging and he realizes he can hear that his partner had stopped and he turns and as he turns to look, he realizes that his partner is going to shoot as well. So he stops and he pulls up his shotgun, puts it to his shoulder, and takes two shots. So there's four shots that came from a different direction. The other two rangers probably had fired three or four shots each. They know that they don't have, you know, they got three more rounds in each gun. So as Gus and his partner shoot, they see it kind of wobble um, like it had been hit multiple times. And it turns and it looks like a cornered. He compared it to a cornered raccoon when it's just trying to figure out who a cornered raccoon with rabies. It's just trying to figure out who it's going to bite and what it's going to do. It's already killed a person. There's civilians in a vehicle. So it turns and starts charging Gus and his partner. And they both take two more shots. And that's when the dog man drops. So now all four rangers are stopped. Um... Gus's partner is on a handheld, calls into um, their immediate supervisor. That action had to be taken, and they believe the creature has now been dispatched. No human casualties except for the woman that they had initially been called for. They can hear in their supervisor's voice that shit just hit the fan they were told to all four were told to secure the area make sure that it is dead something that you shouldn't have done but the media supervisor wasn't there you know so it's kind of hard saying you know you shouldn't have done it but you weren't there right now, <clears throat> they go up onto the scene and make sure that it's dead. They're looking at it. It's leaking blood from all over its body. It had been shot, you know, numerous times. Um, somewhere between, you know, 14 to 16 times, this thing is just leaking. It's a at least seven and a half feet tall, very dark gray colored, um, almost like a, a gray stormed night in the sky. It's just dark. Um, they can see that its canines are huge and it, it's just got, you know, just these monstrous canine, um, its muzzle is closed, but the canine are so large that they're sticking out. Not far, but they can see. Um, they're standing probably 25 feet from each other, talking to the other two park rangers. Um, one of the park rangers that had just pulled in said, you know, is it dead? How do we know that it's dead? And raises his shotgun and fires into the top of the dog man's head. 
They go over and look at it more. They now know that it's dead because it didn't flail around. It's just out of commission. Um, so they secure the site. They now have established that the dog man is dead. Um, supervisor comes over the radio again and says, keep the people in their vehicle. Um, your assistance is on its way. Stay out of these people's, out of these, you know, your, your, the people who are coming to assist. Gus and his peep and his two, you know, the other park rangers have no idea who is coming. All they know is their direct supervisor said, assistance is on its way. Stay out of their way. Keep the civilians in their vehicle. Chances are the people that are coming will want to talk to them. 10, 15 minutes go by, nothing. They go and start talking to um, the four civilians in the car. And Gus and the other park ranger, not his partner, but the other from the go and look at the body first of the dog man and then of the woman. Um, that's when they realize how bad she is. They see, you know, chunks just gone. They, they knew that she was dead. Um, there was far too much blood, but they didn't know the consumption um, amount at that time. They just knew. And the, the people are trying to get out of their car. The rangers are like, stay in the car. It's for your own safety, your own well-being. Well, we just saw you kill it. Let us go, you know. Call. Call the sheriff. Call someone. Let us sign some paperwork and let us get the hell out of here. Another five minutes goes by and all of a sudden a large suburban pulls in followed by a cargo van, both blacked out windows, um, both semi new, not like the, not like Gus's park ranger truck or his partners, um, So they're watching the van and the suburban pull up. Um, immediate supervisor states, just pretty much follow orders. Do not step on any toes. These people have been trained to deal with this. Um, do what, just do what you're told. So as they are now, all four park rangers are standing near the car. The park ranger with the most seniority is one of the guys who came in last. He's not a supervisor. He just has more seniority than Gus and everyone else on the scene at the time. Um, goes and approaches these people who just pulled up. Um, they're in nondescript cars, nondescript clothing. Um, five people came out of the Suburban and three out of the van. All have firearms. Um, two of the drivers seemed to have pistols on their waist and everyone else has what appeared to be automatic long guns. Gus is thinking in his head, who the hell are these guys? What the hell is going on? I've never seen anything like this. 
I've never heard of anything like this. Also, I've never seen something that just occurred, you know, moments ago. And the one with seniority goes up and starts to talk to um, the driver of the Suburban. Now, what happens next is, right or wrong, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about, about it. I'm kind of on Gus's side because I talked to him for a little while. And so he's told to pretty much step back, keep the people in the vehicle, do not say anything to them. If you can, get the keys from them, but keep them in the vehicle. We do not need your assistance. Pretty much stay back. Do what you're told. Um, not, not rudely. Things weren't said rudely. Things were was said sternly to all four park rangers. Uh, Gus and his partner looked at each other kind of like, you know, all right, we're good. Well, yeah, whatever. The guy with the seniority always kind of had that complex people with seniority, you know, um, kind of says, you know, who the hell are you guys? Who are you to tell me what to do? We're federal park rangers. Um, the eight people don't say a word. They go and assess the situation. Um, three go to the dog man. Three more go to the woman. And two stay kind of behind the vehicles so no one can get out. They both have what appears to be automatic rifle. And I say what appears to be is because Gus said they could be automatic or they could have been semi-automatic. I'm just saying they were probably automatic because of who these people were. Um, <clears throat> the guy with seniority is getting really snotty, real turn into a real asshole, mouthing off. No one's saying anything to him, but he's like saying some kind of my balls are bigger than your balls bullshit, you know? And um, the two guys that are standing behind everything, um, one of the guys just says, you know, shut up. Quit talking. Do what you're told. Shut up. And he just keeps going. Who the hell are you? I'm federal park ranger, yada, 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 yada. Um, the three that are closest to what's going on now are with the dog man. One of them was the driver of the Suburban. Things are starting to get out of hand and the two guys that are standing back actually pull their rifles up and point them at the park ranger who is mouthing off, guy with seniority, and said, shut up, you know, yada, yada, yada. They weren't having it. They knew that their place was ahead of Gus and his people. The driver of the car, or the Suburban, starts walking very quickly to what they thought de-escalate everything. Because now they're watching one of their fellow park rangers have two long rifles pointed at him about 20 feet away. And everyone is in the, everyone's in the line of fire if, if they pull the trigger. Um... The boss or the driver of the Suburban pulls his pistol out, puts it to the Federal Rangers or Federal Park Rangers head 
and says, you've got two things. You, I shoot you or you shut up. I will call your immediate supervisor. I will let him know what happened right now. But shut up now or we are going to end this. His partner is standing there and goes to raise his shotgun because he sees his partner. Gus and his partner are standing there like, what the hell is going on? You know, what? I'm not raising my rifle. I'm not getting in a firefight with these people. Who that? You know, this isn't an ego fest. The two guys with the long rifles then make their way up. They are now pretty much point blank on the other two park rangers. They're both zip tied. Both park rangers are zip tied and put on the ground. Gus is standing there. Partner standing there. And the driver turns and looks at these at Gus and his partner and has his pistol already raised. He didn't lower it and just said, you know, do we need to do this to you guys as well? Or, you know, call your supervisor, let him know what just happened. See if he wants to come out. But I believe you were told to. And Gus just kind of put his hands up and said, we're good. We, we, we are not part of, you know, whatever. Um, another van, about five minutes later, pulls up from the opposite direction. This is a different kind of cargo van. It's one that has seats in it. Because when they open the door, the sliding door, they can see the seats. All the windows are blacked out, but when the door opens, you can see the seats. Three guys get out of that one, just like the other cargo van. They just walk right up. There's no communication with the other people on scene. They walk up and they grab the four people out of the car. They zip tie them and they put them in the van and they drive off. There is not a word said. It was that quick. About 15 minutes later, Gus's supervisor shows up with another guy who just happens to be, you know, a second in command. Um, the other two park rangers that are zip tied are sitting on the ground next to the back of the civilian's car. The supervisor and the driver of the suburban start talking quietly and away from the area, nodding their heads kind of, you know, and um, as they're doing that, the body of the dog man is now wrapped up very quickly in what appeared to be a either tarp or a body bag, large body bag, put in the van. A few minutes or seconds later, the woman is in the same way and put in the van. They're just like, what the hell is going on? Gus and his partner are just like looking at each other thinking, you know, we'll talk about this after, but what the hell is going on? 20 minutes go by. The bodies are out of the place or out of the scene. Cleanup's going on. Um, a fire truck pulls in, which it's not a local fire truck it's just a water tanker pulls in and everyone is told to you know in their vehicles back them up so the truck can get in 
whoever can move the car, the civilian car, move it, kind of pull it over to the side here. And this nondescript tanker pulls in. Two guys get out. It's got hoses. They hose down the whole area. They pull out and drive away. Seconds later, not seconds, I'm just... Minutes later, this whole thing from start to finish was about two hours. Um, a flatbed pulls in and the car is put on that. <clears throat> Mind you, the two guys, the two park rangers, are still zip-tied. Not saying a word. One, because they, they have now witnessed everything that's gone on and kind of realized we messed up real bad. We should have just kept everything kosher. Um, the van's gone now. The Suburban guys load up. The park ranger or the supervisor and the Suburban guy talk one more time. They're gone. Zip ties are cut. The two that were zip tied are told to go back to the headquarters and wait. Gus and his partner are starting to get into their vehicle and you go to headquarters as well and wait. Okay, okay. They get back to headquarters. Um, they don't see their supervisor. They don't see anything. They're like, where did they go? You know, they were right behind us. When did they turn off? What the hell? We have things to do. You know, it's getting later and later now. Shift's almost over. Uh, about 15 minutes go after that. And the immediate supervisor walks in along with the gentleman that was driving the Suburban. There's paperwork put out in front of Gus and his partner. They're told just to sign it. Read it if you want. Pretty much what it says is you didn't see anything, you didn't hear anything, and you don't know anything. And if anything ever comes back at you, you pretty much say that whole thing. Um, nothing happened. Yada, yada. All right, good to go. You guys are good. Gus, go home. Go do, remember what we said. The two wise guys that wanted to get in a gunfight with government agents are still zip tied. They get unzip tied. And, um, because once they got back to that location, they were zip tied again. Um, They're let go. Gus doesn't know this until two days later that the two guys were let go and he had never, never talked to either one after that. Um, the guy that had the most, uh, you know, uh, time in, no one really liked him that much anyway. So it was kind of like, all right, um, Periodically, Gus would wonder what happened to the people in the car. And he's never once seen either or the other park rangers that were immediately let go. They don't know what was said because they weren't in the room. But how crazy is that? You, you are told to do something. You do not comply. And then when you get brought up on your crap, you can't handle it. Unbelievable. So then periodically through the remaining years, the remaining eight years that Gus worked, um, he had periodically spotted 
one of these creatures one more time, you know, running through the woods or running off the side of the road at night. Um, but never, never had an incident like that again. Never had to deal with the agents again. And they never asked questions either. Gus never asked a question what happened. And after all that was done and said and the paperwork were done and signed, they never even his partner and him never even talked about the experience after it was like, all right, we just witnessed what can happen if we do buck the system. Yes, we are federal park rangers, but there's always going to be someone that's got, you know, more juice than us. So crazy, crazy experience. And the whole time, during that whole period from his whole years worked from the late 80s to 2011, he had heard Dogman be mentioned, even in the 80s up through the 90s, up until he had that experience in 2003. How friggin' insane is that? Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's upload as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. Your support is what makes this channel honestly so special and what continues to make the channel grow and go. Please, everyone, stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, our pets, our family, and friends. These creatures are real. They are out there. They are dangerous. Share that information with the people you love and it may just save their lives someday. Don't stop pushing back and God bless you all.